It's pretty hard to get a good looking map when you only print in black and white. Look what happens when you add color to that same map. It's so much easier to distinguish the key features and see the adjacent areas. That's why here at the U.S. Geological Survey in Palo Alto, California, they use this Tektronix Phaser 3 color printer for their output. Now, you don't have to be a map maker to want to do color printing. After all, much of what we see on our computer screens these days is in color. Why not put the color on the paper? Today, we'll show you how to upgrade to color printing on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is brought to you in part by Intel, microprocessor technology for the software of today and tomorrow. Intel, the computer inside. Additional funding is provided by the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. And by Hewlett Packard, personal computer division. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Shafay, and with me today is Michael Sugihara of MWA Consulting, a firm which specializes in color printing technology. Michael, you have some spectacular examples here of color output using dye sublimation technology. Show me what you have. Yeah, so what we have here is an image that came off of a Kodak Photo CD. Okay, so here's the original uh, right, photo as it was on the Mac, and this is your original output. As you can see, the sky is pretty unremarkable. Kind of dull, so let me grab that one away from you. And what's this? It's another image where the sky is much more spectacular. So you kind of stole that sky for the background, and voila. Now we have a much more spectacular image. That's great. And I mean, not only did you, did you solve the problem of putting that sky in, but the quality is like 35 millimeter film. I mean, exactly. it doesn't look like a computer printer at all. This is great stuff at the high end. What I'm concerned about is sort of your average user. I want a color printer but the issues are time and money is with everything else in life. It's still expensive, and it takes a lot of time to get one of these things out of a color printer. Are we going to solve those problems to make color printers uh, really commonplace in the office? Well, you can actually get color printing nowadays for under $500, but uh, the normal business color printer is still in the three to $6,000 yeah. range. The other problem is, is that uh, color images usually take uh, minutes per page to print as opposed to pages per right. minute, which we're used to on other laser printers. And how soon can we solve these problems and get to the more common color Well, I, I'm optimistic. I think in the next couple of years we'll be mm -hmm. seeing some products. All right. Today we will scan the market for color printers from low-cost desktop units to very expensive high-end machines, which, as you saw, can rival traditional color photography. Now, some of us want color because it just makes our documents look nicer. But there are some applications where color isn't just nice, it's critical. We found one good example at the Phoenix Baptist Hospital in Arizona. Dr. Gary Mackman relies on the precise color images produced on this Canon BJC 600 bubble jet printer to assist him with presentations to medical groups, paramedics, and patients. Dr. Mackman is chief of ophthalmology at Phoenix Baptist Hospital. He works with the hospital's communications department to develop slides and color brochures. Most of the uh, images that we deal with, at least, are very technical, medical, graphic type images. And, and those are usually very detailed and, and lots of different colors and, and, and a lot of organs and things very close to each other. And uh, the, the use of the color helps that tremendously because you can use very different colors to show things that are very close together and it'll stand out a lot better than it would in black and white or grayscale. The Canon BJC 600 uses a special quick dry ink so there's no need for coated paper. It produces near photographic quality in a small desktop unit. The difference is in the DPI. Most printers today are 300 DPI or dots per inch but on the uh, Canon they have their set at 360 uh, and while that may not seem like much um, the reality is it's a lot sharper. Uh, it could be just the way they've designed their color heads also, but it does lay down color much better. The um, sharpness as far as black and white, um, it isn't really a, a tremendous difference in sharpness there, but is a tremendous difference in the ability to put across an image. Um, you can only use 256 shades of gray, but we can use 16 million shades of color. There's a four printhead device with four separate ink tanks, one each for cyan, magenta, yellow, and true black. This produces laser quality black and white documents as well as color output. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Jonelle Patterson.
Now begins the battle of color printing technologies. And here to start out are Michael Thompson of Hewlett Packard and A.J. Rogers of Tektronix. Michael, let's start with you. And this is the HP DeskJet 550C, low-cost desktop color printing using inkjet technology. And explain the inkjet technology to me. Okay. Well, inside here we have the two cartridges. Uh, one is a black cartridge and one is a color cartridge. Okay, so you have them both in at the same time, so really it's a, it's a monochrome printer and it's a color printer. Th that is correct, and that's, and that's a very important distinction for our customer, the uh -huh. type of people who's buying this printer. They don't want to buy a black printer and a color printer. So um, in this way, they're getting, they're getting both. And most of the time, I assume you're really just one black printing. It's that's, every now and then you want that's the color. Correct. Okay. That's correct. So again, explain the technology. Okay, so inside we have uh, two cartridges. One is black and one is color. And there is a, a little head on the bottom of this and ink in the body. The ink is pulled into the head, heated up, and then shot out onto the paper. And it all takes place inside the cartridge? It all takes place inside the cartridge. And in the color cartridge, the principle is the same. You've got three colors, uh -huh. and the print head will make a few passes with the different colors and make up to 16 million wow. colors that you can print with the Okay, with the can I ask you to actually print something out here? So let's see how long it takes and what it looks yes, like and how noisy it is and that kind okay, of stuff. Okay, well, I'm going to print a, a memo, which would be a, a typical uh, document that one of uh -huh. our customers would print. So this would be a typical business kind of document where you want a little color in there to jazz things That's up. That's correct, yes. And uh, color really does help with, the, with bringing points out uh, that, that one has to make. Uh, it gets attention I'm going to ask well. you to take the little cover yes. off here so the viewers Certainly. can actually see what's happening. I think my uh, technical abilities will stretch to that. There we go. All right, now while it's printing out here, let me ask you a couple of things. Early on, inkjet technology kind of had a bad rap. I mean, special mm -hmm. paper, smear, yes. clogged cartridges. Have you solved those problems? We now? absolutely have, yes. Um, this printer will pr print on plain paper. Uh -huh. um, it'll also print on a, a glossy media, and it will print on transparencies. Uh -huh. um, you can put a stack of 50 transparencies, for example, in here. You can also do 50 envelopes. And so we've pretty much cured that problem with the, with the special paper. Uh, the clogging we've taken care of by putting the ink head, the, the print head on the end of the cartridge. Uh -huh. And what happens is when the ink runs out, you, you throw that away and you put a new one in. So you're essentially replacing the print head at the same time as you're replacing the ink. Mm -hmm. And that eliminates um, problems that, that were in the early inkjet printers. H how about smearing when the, when the copy comes out? Do you have to be careful um, not to touch it or something? Uh, not, well, not really. If you wait till it's finished printing, the, uh, the device has a has uh, these wings here, which hold the, the paper up, and uh -huh. when they drop down and the paper drops, that's when it's dry. All right, now how much does it cost for the desk jet uh, This printer lists for $719, so obviously at a, at a, at a reseller, so it's considerably less than that, probably under $600. And what about for Mac users? For Mac users, it's the same. Uh, all of our printers uh, have a Macintosh version, uh -huh. and they're priced at the same. Okay, I guess we're almost done with our output here, and it's pretty, pretty nice. Maybe you take it out and we could take sure. a look at it, Michael. Yes, by all means. All right. Well, that's pretty sharp. There's no question about it. Let me sort of hold it up here. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm pretty quick, too. You've got some other examples of output. Yes. Show me the, the range of things we could do okay. with the DesJet. Well, here's, a, for example, uh, say a realtor uh -huh. who was trying to... Uh, kind of hold it up straight sorry, so you yes. can see that clearly. Um, so I have a picture of the house and then the information uh, about the that's house. That's pretty nice, yeah. Yeah. Okay, we what else have, did you um, You here's, mentioned transparencies. Yes. Here's, a, here's a typical transparency, and I'll turn this one around to put mm -hmm. it on the so back. So for presentations for and presentations, so on. presentations, that's right. All right, just a couple um, other examples real quick. You can get fancy well, if you really want to. Now, yeah. now, we don't usually expect most of our Let's customers the to do these, now, there, yeah. but, uh, but that's something But you can do that fun. off yes, this little printer. Yes, and my, uh, my kids like to play with kid picks, which is, uh, and this, isn't, this isn't off kid picks. So but they it's, uh, create the they color pictures print, and they can actually print them print out. Print them. Yes, exactly. All right, thanks so much. That's the desk jet. And I want to move over to AJ here and take a look at your Tektronix color printer. Michael was showing us inkjet technology. You use thermal transfer technology. Let me ask you to crank this thing up so we can see something okay, come out. We have an image coming in. Okay, now. and then yeah. explain the, the thermal transfer technology. Okay, the way that this works, Stuart, is that we have a ribbon which is coated with colored ink. And the inks are actually made out of a solid wax rather than a liquid material. The uh, wax is transferred from the ribbon to the paper via heat. And to create that heat, there's a print head that runs the full width of the page. So there's no back and forth motion. Mm -hmm. In fact, the paper is continually going through the printer actually much like a printing press. That has the advantage of uh, faster uh, printing operations mm -hmm. and um, also uh, uh, the capability of um, uh, doing overhead transparencies, paper, and that sort of thing. Sure. Now, your printer is a little more expensive. This technology is more expensive than the inkjet. What do you get for the extra money? Yes. This uh, printer, the Phaser 200, is aimed at the office work group uh, for people who have a uh, serious need for color. Um, it has workgroup features like multiple paper trays, for example, mm -hmm. to be able to uh, print from paper or transparencies without leaving your desk, for instance. It also has a uh, throughput or printing speed of up to two pages mm -hmm. per minute, 
which actually makes it possible to use this printer to make final output. For example, rather than going to a quick copy shop, it is actually practical to um, make the final prints. All right, so let's take a look here a second. Okay. I guess we're about to print out a piece of output That's which right. it's been mm -hmm. working on, so we can take a look at the copy coming out. Mm -hmm. And it's making noises, so right. I assume it'll be out. As soon as right. this is done, I want to ask you to open up the box okay, so we can fine. look inside and sure. actually see how that works. Right. It's actually the paper is now rotating, and you can hear the uh, printer applying the three layers of color on okay, top. Okay, so it's really doing the printing at the moment exactly. inside. Right. And then when it's done, it just sort of shoots it, just, it out. It just comes out. Okay, and there we go. All right, let me just hold that one up. All right, that is certainly pretty clean and pretty nice. All right, we're done, so open it up a second. Sure. And let's take a look inside, AJ. And again, let's focus on how you handle the printing here. Sure. And tell me what's going you on. You can here. see the uh, thermal transfer ribbon here. So there are your three There's primary the three colors. three primary colors. Uh, this is the thermal print head, and the paper in itself goes on a drum below the, uh, below the ribbon. So the heat is applied from here to here and transfers the image onto the And this the, uh, prints paper. through once, and then you keep on going through the ribbon each time. You don't right. reuse this. Right, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe you can close that up, and now... Uh, how about the cost of operating this? I think it's mm -hmm. a little more expensive per copy. Well, it depends on the nature of the prints you're making. For example, if you're doing high coverage copies uh, like let's, this. Let's take a look at that one. Right. This page, for There's example, a lot, of color, a lot of color, but it costs less than 60 cents to produce. Really? Less than 60 cents. Uh, thermal transfer technology has a cost per page that is constant regardless of the uh, amount of coverage, which makes well, it ideal right. for that's doing right. high yeah. coverage applications like so business you're not presentations. you're consuming more ink, less ink, depending on what that's you're right. doing. That's right. That's right. Okay, well, give me some, show me some of these other examples sure. of nice output you have here. What are these brochures for? Sure, these brochures, for example, illustrate the fact that with uh, its uh, new uh, plain paper capability, can print on, both, print on sides. both sides. So you could use the printer, for instance, to make a design mock-up of a brochure, or if you needed only a small quantity, even to make final prints. Printing on both sides, this brochure would cost less than a dollar per uh, copy to mm -hmm. make, which is uh, favorable to uh, okay. going to copy Okay, and what shops. are the other examples of output of you course, have here? A real estate example, again, with uh, waterproof inks, you can put this outside a house and it won't mm -hmm. uh, uh, run in the rain. Transparency Transparencies, there. overhead transparencies, and uh, business uh, graphics. Another very popular application is making handouts. Here you can see I've made a, a presentation handout with six slides on a page. And uh, I've therefore been able uh, to put 24 pages or 24 slides to hand out yeah, to And while we've been talking, it printed out that, that pretty nifty little That's piece. That's right, of and it'll be too. printing another one here in yeah. just a moment, yes. Okay, what does it cost for the Tektronix? Okay, the Phaser 200E starts at $36.95, uh, which includes interfaces for Macintosh, PC, and uh, workstations, uh -huh. all simultaneously active. Real quick, you mm -hmm. printed that sweatshirt on the printer, huh? Yes, that's right, Stuart. I did, uh, in fact, last night. It's an example of uh, what we call chest top publishing. Chest top publishing. Well, that's worth the money, absolutely. Yeah, it can make the transfer. All right, sometimes it's not enough just to print out colored documents in the office. Certain applications require large format output. For those situations, we found the Colossal Jet FB, a flatbed color inkjet printer. Bigger doesn't always mean better in the graphics world, but at Colossal Graphics in Palo Alto, specially designed software allows the color enlargement process to take place with no loss of quality or resolution. One of those applications is called power production. Some applications don't know how to write a real good um, PostScript file. So what happens is if you've ever seen where you can have like an Adobe Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Fonts, Adobe uh, uh, ATM and try to print to a laser printer and it'll say out of memory. Okay. What our software does is break up the file so that, that it, it can be processed. Colossal software includes a unique algorithm that prevents over-inking. The flatbed printer utilizes a Hewlett-Packard inkjet cartridge adapted for spot color usage for a wider variety of true color choices. Many of the Colossal customers want their images mounted. All of our customers who demand large format, uh, they want it 48 inches wide because foam core boards come in 48 inch by 96 panels and so that this allows them to actually produce images that will, that will mount perfectly to a 48 inch by 96 inch board. Colossal's flatbed printer also prints material used on oversized product boxes and textile and tile designs. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Janelle Patterson. Well, what we all really want is a simple color laser printer and quality that rivals professional color publishing. Well, you can actually have it now with two different printers. 
Here to show them off are John Kramer from QMS and also over there Mark Housley of Supermac Technologies. John, let's begin with you and if I could ask you to start the printing process sure. here and just let's get something cranking on our Laser 1000. Okay, now this is I guess like kind of three laser printers in one given what we're doing with the primary colors. That's correct. Up until now, a laser color laser printer has been what forty, fifty thousand dollars. That's correct. And you're coming out with this about the ten thousand range. How have you done that? I mean, what's the change in technology that's brought the price down? Well, there are a number of factors at work here. One, QMS has a technology and architecture they call Crown Architecture, and what this allows us to do is to put a family of products on a network for our customers, whether it's on a campus environment or in a wide area network, such that in a family of monochrome printers, four through 40 pages a minute, and now with color laser, they can expect consistent and durable output across their whole enterprise. Okay, so you've got the same basic laser engine going across the, That's correct. the system then. And the rest of it has to do with controller technology uh -huh. and of course the engine technology. And all three of those have come together to allow us for the first time to bring out a color laser printer that does sit on the desktop. Okay, now we're running this off a of Mac. The Laser 1000 will also work on other platforms? That's part of our arch architecture. It allows us to run off both the Unix as well as PC and Mac uh, okay. platforms. Now, 10,000 bucks is still a lot of money to print. So color has got to be worth something, I assume. That's I mean, right. why are people willing to pay this much money to print in color? Well, one of the primary concerns in the business marketplace today is effectiveness. And as we sit there with multiple platforms uh, of multiple architectures in our businesses, many of them with uh, at least 70% of them with uh, color monitors, everyone is working in color, but the vast majority of business output is on monochrome laser printer. Yeah. So to the extent that you could co-mingle consistent output with color okay. laser, which we have done, business effectiveness with regard to enhanced communication is, is now present in the marketplace. Sure. And studies have shown that people, one, will recognize color. Yeah, let's take a look at your comparison here. Here is a black and white uh, yeah. document, and now we have the color uh, output that has just come out on the well, printer. It talks a lot louder, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. One, you recognize color faster, and studies have shown that people learn with the use of color 60 so, I mean, you're really moving fish. information in a more efficient Absolutely way, right. then, aren't and, you? And facilitating understanding. Yeah. Can we look inside the machine for a second sure. and let's see how you're doing this all? Again, this is a very unique technology. We have the toner cartridges made up of the primary uh, colors. It really is kind of like three laser printers here, all working in different colors. That's correct. Colors. And the way it works, there's a photoconductor belt in there that is a function of how many colors you're using, makes four passes, uh -huh. transfers the image to a drum, and the print image is transferred to the paper in one pass. Mm -hmm. All right, real quick, show me some of the other examples of the output from this baby you have here. Depending on the environment and application that you need, for example, in the real estate marketplace, it becomes very easy now for a real estate mm -hmm. agent with a digital camera to create a compound document sure. that would be distributed or mailed to okay. their customers. In an environment where you're trying to get your customer's attention through the mail, in this particular sure. instance, Direct a return, mail. You highlight the instructions mm -hmm. to the customer so they get okay. the point and that one, crisply. And your classic kind of chart. And, and as your well, whether it's in transparency or in color That's laser. You color have laser printer, about 10000 bucks. That's correct. All right, John, thanks. Let me move over here and talk with Mark. And what are you in the middle of doing here, Mark? Well, I'm in the middle of printing a, a die sub image, which is an 11 by 17 continuous well, Let me stop you for a second. Die sub. Okay, we're talking die sublimation mm -hmm. technology. Right which is kind of like the thermal transfer we saw before, right? But what's different about it? The main difference is that printer fools the eye into thinking it sees one pixel as a single color. Uh -huh. But what in reality you're, is you're seeing is three or four dots close together that fool the eye into seeing a single color. So you color. can get the same fineness, the same gradation with the thermal transfer? No, you can get a much higher optical resolution with this printer because each dot is the full 16 million colors. Uh -huh. So you can get a 300 DPI image that looks just like a photograph, even under magnification. Right, okay, now what's coming out right now? This is the finished print here? This is a Photoshop image. Uh -huh. It's on its last pass. And we see it started out over there. It started out over here. It's on its last pass. It's printed, printed the black ink. Okay, and it's laying the colors down right on top of, of each, each other. other right. what you're saying, not inside Precisely the Precisely on top of dust. each other. Okay, can we take a look at that then? And, and then it's pretty gorgeous. There's no question about that, huh? Okay, can you open up the machine now? Let's sure. take a look at what you mean by this dye sublimation. Well, there's a ribbon. 
that has a series of dies, and there's four passes. Okay, and that's this ribbon in here, that's this, yeah. which again looks like thermal transfer. Very but you're saying similar. It's how you use right. it that's different. Right. When the head runs over the ribbon and touches the paper, it sublimates the die. That is, turns it from a solid to.